So an exact way of describing real estate in a contract, deed, mortgage, or other document that will be accepted by the court of law is called the legal description, okay? Again, recorded plat, anything that's not your street address. Your street address isn't really a legal description. You can use it in a listing contract if you wish. You can use it as a leasing. Um, if you want to lease the property, that's fine. You can call Amazon and have your packages delivered there, but you may not use it to transfer property. All right, you gotta, you're gonna put it in there, but you're not gonna use it. Okay, number two, in a sales contract, which of the following is an acceptable legal description of the property, okay? And it is a meets and bounds description, right? MLS has nothing to do with it, all right? Johnson property on Maple Street does not, nor does the lot number. It would have to be lot, block, section number, subdivision. It would have to be the whole thing. Lot, block, lot number alone is not enough. So the meets and bounds description is the one that we would use as the legal description. And during those, uh, when we do meets and bounds, we're gonna be using monuments, all right? Monuments, and um, we'll probably have a stake in the ground somewhere now in the current days. They'll put a piece of steel in the ground so they can find these monuments. Because back in the day when they first started this, they had trees and rocks. Those things move over time, right? So number three, a monument is used in which of the following types of legal descriptions? And the answer is B, meets and bounds, okay? Meets and bounds. Number four, in describing real estate, the system that uses feet, degrees, and natural markers is the meets and bounds description. Pretty much what we just said. Pretty much what we just said. Number five, if the property being transferred is residential property with an established subdivision, the most common legally used description would be the reference to the recorded plat. This would be your lot block section number, right? Subdivision name. That's the reference to a recorded plat. You'd also have a tax map number or a PIN number, property identification number. Either way, you'd have all that. You'd have all that. Number six. A street address would be adequately would be adequate property description for a short-term lease. It's okay to use a street address for leasing, for listings. You don't need all of that detail. All right. Um, seven, eight, nine. I'll let you look at later. It is the uh, there's a picture of a uh, of a unit. Just know that the answer is C, C, and D for seven, eight, nine. Um, just make for that later. You can see that map at the end of these questions. Skip to number 10. Which method of legal description is not used in North Carolina? The government survey system is used west of the Mississippi. West of the Mississippi. It's not used here in North Carolina. All right. We're going to use meets and bounds, or we're going to use a reference to a recorded plat, but we're not going to use the government survey system. That's west of the Mississippi. When surveying land, number 11, a surveyor refers to the principal meridian that is D within the rectangular survey system area in which the land is being surveyed. Remember I said these things start on a principal meridian, which would be the longitude, and then the latitude is the baseline. So that's what they're looking for. Where's the meridian? Okay, where's the meridian on a government survey system? Mm -hmm. And if you put those two things together, remember they're numbered from uh, upper right-hand corner, one through six, down seven through 12, right? So the 13 would always be, and they'd always be the same. So section 13 would always be up against section 18. And no matter how far we go, those will always be numbered the exact same, all right? Number one, slot number one is the upper, uh, the north, the northernmost uh, right-hand side. And lot number 36 is the southernmost right-hand side, okay, because of the numbering system. So 13 and 18 would be together. Number 13, in describing real estate, the system that may use a property's physical features to determine boundaries and measurements is the meets and bounds system, right? Meets and bounds system, that's what we're using. Right, rocks, trees, whatever, monuments, how we get them. 
Now, government survey system again, one section, if we have a section, we have six by six townships, six miles wide, six miles tall, right? Inside there, we have 36 of these sections, one square mile. Each square mile has 640 acres, and they're all part of this township. So therefore, number 14 is all of these, D. A section is one square mile, is 640 acres, and is part of that township, is part of that township, yeah? Number 15, if the, local market, if the local market value of undeveloped land is 25,000 an acre, what's the value of a lot that has 21, 780 square feet? All right, so we need to know a couple of things here, right? And this is how the questions are gonna state themselves, is the fact that you are going to need to know some assumptions. You're gonna to have to bring some assumptions with you. All right, do my screens together here. Okay, so we need to know that if we have 21,780, well, it's $25,000 an acre. So how many square feet are in an acre? 43,560, right? Four grandmas doing 35 and a 60. So how many acres do we have? This works out nice and neat. It's half an acre. We're 0.5, right? So now we have 0.5 times 25,000. And that's going to give us 12,500. Right? So what we had to do is figure out how much this, um, how much acreage we have. And that's what, how you do 15. Okay? A bay window in the living room has the following dimensions. What's the total square footage? All right, so as we're looking at this bay window here, we're looking at this bay window. We have to look at it in a couple of sections, all right? So the first one is this center rectangle. So we know it is six feet wide, and we also know that it's four feet tall. That's what it says here, six times four, all right? So we know that it is 24 square feet. So what's that leave us with? Two triangles, right? So remember our triangle, four is the, um, is the height. So if this is um, six feet across, that means that this is two feet and this is two feet, right? Because our, our width total is 10 feet. We have two feet on each side. So four times two divided by two, right? So that's eight divided by two, which is four. So we have one side that's four, and we have the exact same triangle on the other side is four. Four, eight, 12, one, 32 square feet. Okay, 32 square feet is what that comes to. All right, number 17, two equal size rooms need to be recarpeted at a cost of $25 per square yard. Each room is 12 by 14. What's the cost of the carpeting? All right. <clears throat> okay, so we got to pay attention here. Two equal sized rooms, whoops, sorry. Two equal sized rooms, all right? And this is per square yard. How many square feet are in a square yard? How many square feet are in a square yard? Nine, yes, there you go. Well, it is um, three by three, right? So there are nine. A cubic yard would be 27, okay? But there are nine. So in this particular case, what we have here is we're gonna measure these rooms, 12 by 14, all right? So 12 by 14 is going to give us 168 square feet, but then we have to divide that by nine to get square yards, right? I remember there's two. So it's 18.67 square yards <laughs> times 25 square dollars a square yard, 466.67 is going to be my cost for one room. I got two, right? Times two. So we're going to round it up to 934. You can't buy a partial square yard. You're going to have to buy the whole thing. 
right? So we multiplied our square footage, got 168 square foot for one room, divided by nine, because that's how many square feet are in a square yard, comes to 1860.67, $25 a square yard, 466.67 times two rooms, 934, 933, whatever. I just gave you, you know, threw out a few formulas. You folks, every time you walk into Home Depot, every time you walk into Lowe's, and you start shopping for carpet, you're doing the same thing, only you're not putting it on a mathematical formula, right? How many square yards do I have? All right, we'll get that, right? Length times width divided by nine square yards, right? And now I think Lowe's and Home Depot are even selling carpet by the square foot to make the price come down a little bit. So, but you do it all the time. It's not something that you don't do. Okay, a buyer purchase number 18. Buyer purchased a half acre parcel for $2.15 per square foot. What was the selling price of the parcel? All right, so we have to figure out what a half an acre is, right? How many square feet are in a half acre? So 43,560, 43,560 divided by two is going to be. Um, 21,780, right? 21,780, and we're going to multiply that by $2.15. And it's going to come to 46,827, right? 46,827. So all we did was we had to know that what our, uh, how much square foot is in an acre, divide it by two, multiply it by $2.15. Number 19, a rectangular parcel of land was purchased, um, purchased that contains 350 acres with 1,300 feet of road frontage. Did anybody do this question? Takes a little bit of work. This is one that takes a little bit of thought and a little bit of work, okay? But I can't say that you won't get something like this and real life gets in your way, right? It's not always neat. Okay, so rectangular parcel of land was purchased that contains 350 acres with 1,300 um, square feet of uh, 1,300 feet of road frontage. An investor wants to buy the neighboring rectangular land that has the same depth but has 6,000 feet of road frontage. How many acres are in the tract of land that the investor wants to buy? All right, so this is what we want to do. We want to draw two squares. All right, we want to draw two squares. This is our first one, okay? And then this one down here is going to be our big one, okay? All right, so this first one has 350 acres. So we're gonna multiply 350 times 43,560, okay? 43,560, we need to find out how many square feet we have, right? So if we take that 350 and divide and multiply it by 43,560, okay, it means we're going to have 15 million, 15 million, uh, 246, 246, 000. All right, now, length times width is going to give us all of those square footages, right? Length times width. So we know we have road frontage of 350 feet. So what am, I, what am I going to do to get this number? I'm going to divide this by the 350, right? And that's going to tell me how deep this lot is. So when I do that, when I divide that, I'm sorry, not 350, um, 1,300 frontage, right? My bad. I have 1,300. So I'm going to divide that by 1,300, All right? And that's going to give me my depth. So when I do that, it's going to mean that I am 11,727.692. 
0.692. Put them in your calculator. Don't be afraid of large numbers, okay? Don't be afraid of large numbers. Okay, so we figured out that part and we needed, that was the part we needed to figure out how many acres because we have 6,000 square uh, frontage feet here. We don't know how many acres there are. That's what we're gonna solve for. But we do know what our depth is, right? Because we did it here, we have the same depth. So when we multiply those, we're gonna end up with 70 million, 366, 152. That's what we're going to end up with. And what are we going to do? We want how many acres? Divided by 43,560. 43,560. And we're going to round it out to about 1,615.4 uh, acres. Okay. So we knew how much the frontages were. We knew they were the same depth. So we also know that how many acres we had in one of them. So length times width, right? Width times depth is going to give us square footage. So we can figure out the other side of it, right? And then we're just gonna roll it in. Anybody not see what I just did? All right. Here's that map for seven, eight, and nine. You can come down and find it and use that if you wish. Number 20. A parcel of land is 660 feet by 660 feet. And a small stream uh, div equally divides the parcel into two lots. How many acres are in each lot? Well, the easy way to do this is multiply 660 by 660. 660 times 660. And that's going to give us 435600. That makes it pretty easy, doesn't it? And then we're going to divide it by how many square feet are in an acre. So that's going to give us 10 acres. But it asks how many acres are in each lot. We have two lots, so we're going to have to divide it by two. Five acres in each lot. OK. Last one here. If you purchase a lot, that's 125 by 150. For 65, uh, 64, 68, and 75 cents. What price did you pay per front foot? All right. I'm not sure if we mentioned this the other day, but the front footage is always the side by the road. But if they don't tell you which side is against the road, the first number is your front footage. Okay. So whenever you see a diagram, they don't tell you which one is the front. The first set number in the multiplier is the frontage. So in this particular case, we have 125. So we have 64, 68, and 75 cents. And we're going to divide that by 125. All right. And that's how much we paid per front foot, 51.75. Just remember that if we're doing cubic, and we don't do too much cubic, but if we are doing cubic, you got to add height in there too. So it would be length times width times height, okay? Um, sometimes you need that for a cement problem if you're going to pour a foundation or you're going to pour a patio or something of that nature. You may need that number. But that's the only time we'd really use cubes, cubics. Um, gave a different result. Oh, in this particular case, it would. Yeah, in this particular case, it would give you a different result because it asked you for the front footage. And the front footage, when it's put into the, if they ask for front footage, anytime you're talking about purchase or lot measurements, the front footage is always that first number. Well, I, I don't have an empirical reason why, they just do it that way. Okay. Same thing with um, that you need to know. 
So if I said a lot is 200 by 450, this 200 is the front footage. Also, when you see drawings, when you see drawings, if I was to draw this, I would say that anything on this left-hand boundary, that is considered your front footage. Okay? So if when you're looking at either a diagram or a multiplication problem that don't tell you which side is the front footage, if you're looking at the multiplication problem, it's the first number, that's the front footage. And if you're looking at a diagram, it is the number to the left, right? Whatever's on the left side of that diagram, that is the front footage, okay? particularly when it comes to, and only when it comes to front footage. That's the way they designate them in the books. All the texts are usually like that, okay? In the event you get one, you'll see that it, that's usually the way it plays. All right, very good. All right, so let's review here very, very quickly where we left off in chapter five. We started talking about different types of deeds. And we talked specifically about four different types of deeds, right? And the first one was a general warranty deed. And this is the best one we can have, all right? This is the best one we can have. A general warranty deed is going to be a, a deed that's conveyed. And now this is the one that's going to be asked for in the sales contract. In the sales contract, it's going to ask for a general warranty deed. If we give any other type of a general warranty deed or any other type of deed, we have to do an amendment and change that, or actually an addendum and change that, okay? Oh, let's talk there for a second. Hold on. Can anybody tell me the difference between an amendment and an addendum? An amendment and an addendum. So if something was already previously written in that contract and we're gonna make an amendment that means we're going to change what's already been agreed to or what's already been in the boilerplate. If we're going to do an addendum, it means that it hadn't been addressed in that other portion, and we're just going to make a, an addition to it, add, right? So mend is an amendment. We're going to tweak something. Add in addendum, we're going to add something to that, okay? So the, you got to know the difference between the two. I know it's only nomenclature, but it matters, right? It's only words, but it matters, okay? So a heads up on that. You are going to have to, you're going to get scrap paper. Do not be afraid to draw on your scrap paper. And I'm not kidding. I don't care if you got to use a crayon. I don't care if you got to use your pencil. If you draw something in your head and it comes out, it might trigger a thought. And it's perfectly okay. It's your, it's your paper. Nobody's going to collect it. All right? Um, eight and nine. That's okay. We can do page eight now. There's only a few questions here. All right. So number three, Smith owns a parcel of land with 300 feet of road frontage and 120 feet of... Let me get my pencil on. And 120 feet of depth. He plans to build apartments on the land. Each apartment will contain 600 square feet. Um, if the apartments are set back 20 feet from the road, 25 feet from the back of the lot, seven feet from the sides of the lot, how many apartments can Smith build if the apartment building is five stories high? Okay, so let's draw our picture, right? Let's draw our picture. So if I have this big old square here, this is my parcel. This is my parcel. All right, so I have 300 feet this way, and I have 120 feet back and forth, wide side by side. All right. Now, I cannot build, I need 20 feet from the road, so I have to go back 20 feet, and I need 20 feet from the back of the lot. So I have to come up, or 25 feet, so I have to come up 25. So I have 300, but I can't build on 45 of it. Yes, 
So that means that I can only build on 255, right? I'm doing it backwards. Hang on one second. Seven feet from the sides. Seven and seven. So I have 300 minus 14. That's going to be 286. And then I have 120, but I can't build from 25 from the back and 20 from the front. All right. So I have 120 minus that 45. Okay. And that's going to give me 75. So now, now I have 286. It's going to look something like this. This is going to be my buildable area. All right. All right. Multiply 286 times 75, and I'm going to get 21,450. 21,450. Now, that's how many buildable square feet I have. And if I divide this by each one of my units, are going to have to be 600 square feet divided by 600. And if I divide by 600, 35.75. Can I build on that 0.75? Can't do anything with it, right? I can't build 0.75 of a unit. So I can get 35 units in, a, in one floor, but what does it say? I got five stories, 35 times five, right? I can build 175 units. Okay. So I have 300 foot of frontage. I can't build from the left or the right, seven and seven. So I take that 14 off. Two, it gives me 286 buildable front feet. And I can't do uh, 25 from the back, 20 from the front. I only got 20, 120 foot of depth. So that means I can only build 75. I multiply the 286 by the 75, and that's going to give me 21,450. Each unit I can build has to be 600 square feet, 35.75. I can't do 0.75, so I got to get rid of them. I can only build 35 complete units. I have five stories tall. I get 175. A two-story house measures 25 feet by 50 feet. A one-story family room was added that measures 20 by 20. At a cost of $9.95 per square yard for carpet and $2.50 per square yard for insulation, how much will it cost to carpet the house and family room? House and family room, right? So we have a couple of things here. Now, what we want to do is find out our cost per square yard. So we got, um, when we're doing this here, we have $9.95 for the carpet and $2.50 for, um, for the installation, both square yards. So we have $9.95 plus $2.50. So our total is going to be multiplied by $12.45 a square yard, right? $12.45 a square yard. That's relatively cheap carpet. All right. So we have a two story house that measures 25 times 50. So we have 25 times 50 and then times two, right? Because we have two floors. So let's do that. And that should give us 2,500 square feet. Square feet, right? Two times 50 is 100 times 25, 2,500. And then I built only a one level, one story family room that's 20 by 20. So 20 by 20 is going to be what? 400. So that means that I have 2,900 square feet. Square feet. I want square yards divided by nine, right? 322, 22. All right, 222, technically. All right. And then we're going to multiply that by our 1245. And it's going to come to a cost of 440, 11, and 
66 cents. All right. Um, while we're out here, I want to do one more because I think that this one is going to be one that you might you might want to understand. Number two, a triangular shaped lot has a road frontage of 500 feet and a depth of 620 feet. The owner agrees to sell the lot for $8,000 an acre. How much money per front foot will the owner receive if he sells the lot successfully? All right, how much per front foot? So what we got to do here is got to do a couple of things. We have to find out how many square feet so we can figure it out, right? So if we have a triangular shaped lot, triangular lot, so it is um, pretty much shaped like this. And any triangle works, okay? We have road frontage of 500 and we have a depth of 620. So we're gonna do what? Um, 500 times 620 divided by two, all right, so 500 times 620 divided by two. And that's going to be, that's going to come to 155,000. Right? 55,000. We need to find out how many acres, because that's how much we sold it for. 43,560. All right. We have 3.558 acres. We sold it for $8,000. That means we made $28,464 for the selling price. But that's not what it asked me here. How much per front foot did I get? Well, how much was my front foot? It had road frontage of 500 feet. So 28,464 divided by 500. Okay. So you just have to add to the equation a little bit. You have to make sure you answer the whole thing. If you like this video, feel free to share it with a friend. For more real estate education content, please subscribe to the channel. From all of us at Seacoast Real Estate Academy, thank you for watching.